it's sitting so beautifully pushed up. <laughs> Beautiful sunset. Oh my god, the most beautiful time of the day. Hello everyone and a very good morning from Bandhavgarh National Park. My name is Suyash Keshri and I'm your host on this safari experience. I'm a wildlife filmmaker and presenter but I'm not alone here today. On first camera we have Himanshu Yadav, on second camera we have Nitin Krishna and our guide is none other than Lala. Today we are back in Tala zone for our last ever virtual drive. Not last ever, let me not say that. Uh, it's the last virtual drive for this series. And I'm just standing here in Chakradhara. Uh, we had seen our female on the first day, just on this road, about 500 meters that way. I'm hearing some langur alarm calls to my left, some cheetah alarm calls to my left as well. But more than the big cats this morning, I'm interested in that sunrise. The colors are absolutely spectacular. Now, I had promised you on the first episode that I would show you a lot of the famous places such as Rajbera, Bhatan, uh, the area of Spati, the area of Late Solo, whose territory we also saw uh, in Magdi, because Magdi and Tala Zone are connected. But, of course, I was not able to do that because we got busy with our tigress and her cubs right here. And today, I promise to do that for you. Once again, it's an absolute pleasure having you on this virtual safari experience, one of its kind in India. And let's see what we find. Let's see what we can track for you today. And I hope you guys enjoy this last experience. I'm going to slowly start driving while we keep talking. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, a very warm welcome once again. It is quite a chilly morning here in Bandhavgarh. It's about 15 degrees Celsius, which is, and here we have some tiger pug marks actually, before we even started. Here are some tiger pug marks. Himanshu, am I positioned the right way? Let me actually position it better. Sorry guys, this is just how it is when you're on a safari experience like this. Right there, you see them. Right over here, yeah. There is a tiger pug mark. Uh, looks like a female to me and this is actually pretty fresh and she must have crossed this just an hour or two ago 
when we were still waiting to enter the national park. I'm just going to take a closer look and I'm going to ask our cameraman to unmount the camera and just, just show you guys this beautiful pug mark because it's so well defined over here. How I know it's a female is the pug marks are first of all closer together. The middle finger is quite pointed and the carpacial pad which is basically the the entire pad is is quite narrow and how i know it's fresh is because of course no vehicle has gone through here yet and especially some of these bug marks especially that one right there the edges are very sharp you know i'm gonna be i'm not allowed to step off the vehicle but i just want to show you guys quickly for example if i use my hand and put this that is pretty fresh you see the 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 line is very well defined but over the time what happens is the wind actually blows over it and you see they start getting less and less defined so that's what happens that's what wind does to pug marks and to any animal tracks but here this one is really fresh and before we drive off i'm just going to give you some time to enjoy the sunrise and i'm actually going to reposition the vehicle again as well because the sunrise is absolutely spectacular There you've got the sunrise. Zoom in. Wow. It's a new morning. Take some time to set the agenda for the day. Thank God for a new day, a new beginning, a new chapter in life. Remember to be kind to others and to yourself. You can hear so many bird calls this morning. All right, we're going to continue. Remember, during this virtual safari experience, you can send us, send us your questions on safarivithsuyash at gmail.com or you can also put it in the chat box. That's the easiest way for us to get back to you. And I apologize for saying the last ever virtual safari experience. I kind of feel bad for saying that as well. I, I had a slip up. Don't worry, this will not be the last. It will be the last for now, but definitely not the last ever. Beautiful salt trees, the completely shining green. The new leaves have come up right now. And the sun is just breaking the outline. I am driving up to one of my favorite locations, uh, named as Odra Donga, where people can observe sunrise and sunset and see most of the areas in Tala and Bandhavgarh National Park. Bandhavgarh is made up of 32 hills. And the female who I've been, whose pug marks I saw has actually come from this way. And this bridge is literally where we saw her the first morning. So we're going to keep a watchful eye because tigers tend to use the same paths to move back and forth. I'm just going to check this water hole. If you remember, it, this is called Gopalpur Talab. pretty empty right now uh, besides an odd peacock on the left who always stays there beautiful water hole the green algae that you see is actually helping in preserving the water it forms a thick line over it 
and you can imagine when the sun comes up the water must really heat up but because of the algae it doesn't evaporate completely as i was saying bandhagar is made up of 32 hills and the biggest of them is bandhagar plateau itself which re ra raises or rises up rather from sea level to 811 meters in height on top the area is approximately 520 square or rather 520 acres i was going to say square kilometers but <laughs> i that would be completely wrong roughly in acres that's the acreage 520 540 something like that and on top of it there are quite a few lakes that form the lifeline of bandhavgarh national park you know i just while i'm driving i just want to take some time to reflect on this experience i've been wanting to do something like this for nearly 3 years now it took some time for us to put this together there have been a lot of complications and if there were any hiccups during this entire virtual safari experience for you or any bad experiences then we apologize for that as a team but i think we've done a phenomenal job both himanshu and nitin have done excellent work and lala of course is an expert at what he does so i could not be doing this without my team right here and of course i want to say a big thank you to our team at headquarters as well who have managed everything so smoothly bringing this experience to you now this road is a little bumpy so i would ask you guys to hold tight hold on to your hats and sunglasses your cameras if you with kids please hold on to them as well <laughs> we don't want to be having any liability over our heads i don't want that at least look how beautiful this area looks i would ask the man should just slowly pan towards this side Wow. Incredible. This has to be one of the prettiest locations in Bandhavgar and in central India. For me, in whole of India. I thought I saw some pug marks, but that's not it. There were some other marks. for the sunrise magnificent absolutely spectacular wow beautiful unbelievable absolutely unbelievable I'm just going to turn around my car so I can give you guys a look at where it all began. Not even not only for this virtual experience but also for my own series called Safari with Suyash. That was with WWF International. This is exactly where we started from. I I just want to get you guys here um kind of take in everything that's happened 
during this virtual experience. At least for me, that's so special. Be back right where it all started. You can see a large, large area of Bandhavgarh from here. Hope you were able to take it all in. It's time for us to push off. But before I do that, I would ask Himanshu to just pan through this area. In the meantime, I take off my jacket because it got quite warm. All right, off we go. This specific path and this spray mark that I These are very fresh. Jump on the hind legs, come scratching down. Egyptian vulture. Rejoin and fix the fencing here. It's huge! Here's another short segment and today, this was not planned, I kid you not, this we got so, so, so lucky. I was sitting at the lodge, just eating my lunch. And then one of my team members, Gudabia, he was doing some work here and going towards his house. And he called me, son, he's like, yes, 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 come, 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 come. I was like, what happened, what happened? He said, just come, 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 come. So I came and you can hear the tractors. You can see the tractors here. You can see the main road over there. You can see a vehicle spot here. There are cattle over here. But you won't believe what we have here one of the rarest species in Bandhavgarh and not one, we have seven of them. Come on, I'll show you. Today we have something very, very special. You can barely see them on the screen. It's a wild dog! <laughs> oh my gosh. And isn't that amazing? Like, look at this. This is actually made for the village. There's a village over there. Of course, there's a tractor going all over here. And these wild dogs actually came from here when Gudabia was here. And then they came, drank water and sat back down. By the time I came here, they were already fast asleep. But we're just gonna wait here and, and completely give them a lot of space. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to film them. But isn't this fantastic? Like, I, I have seen more leopards, more tigers in Bandhakar than I have seen wild dogs. And for me to see them after so many years, Oh my God, it's such a truly special experience. But I want to point out one thing. It just goes on to show that wildlife doesn't need much. Look, it's middle of the day, it's 2.30 right now. Construction going on right here. There's tractors, there's farming, there's cattle. And these wild dogs, which are known as dholes, are incredibly, incredibly relaxed and they're just laying over there. Amazing. Beautiful. Okay, let's film them and let's show you guys what we are seeing.
So now I'm just going to make my way towards this area called Rajbera. Rajbera was inhabited by a female known as Rajbera. That's where she got her name from. Her mother was a female called Churjara. And Rajbera female is of course Solo's mother. Or rather was Solo's mother. Late Solo, late Rajbera. And Rajbera was also the first tigress I ever saw in Bangalore. No? Sorry about the bumps. Tala is a very rocky area compared to Magdi and Kitoli, which are much more flat. I'm just going to put my buff on to make sure that if we come across some people, I use this as a mask. If it's too dusty, I use this as a mask. So don't mind me. has such high cliffs in some areas. Look at this one. This is of course on the tail end of the plateau area. And here over to my right also you can kind of see the silhouette of Bandhani. Uh, if you remember, I told you guys on the first episode that the Bandhagar Plateau and Bandheri actually has a lot of space in between that. There's a road going through and this is the road. Okay, we'll keep going on. I just wanted to show you guys the landscape real quick. So what are we targeting for today? Uh, of course, this is a unscripted experience so whatever we see we stop and I explain it to you like I would if you were on a safari with me but our idea today is to kind of snake our way to towards Rajbera and Bataan areas which I wanted to show you guys and that belongs to a female who has taken over the territory after Solo passed away uh, some old pug marks I was just noticing so that belongs to a female who took it over from Solo. And then after that area is the territory of the blue-eyed tigress, Spotty. And then beyond that is Kajri's area, who is Spotty's daughter from her first litter.
Corn bill. Oh my god, oh my god. Look at that. We have a Malabai wild horn bill. Oh my god, there he goes. Look at that magnificent flight. There he is. 200, 600, quick. Did you get the flight? Yeah. Wow. That is one of the rarest birds you can see in Banavgar. A Malabar Pied Hornbill. We're just going to switch the cameras real quick so that you guys can get a closer look. So I just opened my reference book right now. Uh, I think the Malabar Pied Hornbill actually flew away. That's okay. We got a good look at it. Uh, so this is the Malabar Pied Hornbill number nine. Uh, right here. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> this is the Malabar Pied Hornbill. That's what we get in Bandhavkar. We don't get the Great Hornbill uh, in Bandhavkar. We get two types of Hornbills. The Malabar Pied Hornbill and the Indian Grey Hornbill. They are absolutely beautiful. Okay, we're gonna keep going. That was a very lucky and rare sighting. Did anyone see where the Malabar Pied Hornbill went? Right? Which one? It's Axel Wood Kage. I think. Do you get a good angle? Alright guys, just be patient with us. We might try to reposition our vehicle in such a manner that you guys can see the horn mill again. Uh huh? Okay. All right, sorry, I think it flew away. But that's okay, we're gonna continue going. Kya must beta tha, yaar. Okay, there it is again. All right, actually, we found the hornbill again. So, I'm just slowly gonna back my vehicle. Nitin, how's the angle? Okay, I think that's a good angle. Wow, look at him. Beautiful. Nitin, good? Yeah. Amazing, look at that big beak. Okay, so the hornbill is actually sitting on a beautiful perch. I'm gonna try taking the vehicle back so that we can get a better angle again. And I'm gonna hope that it doesn't fly away, although I don't know if that's gonna be lucky <laughs> or good enough. I'm just gonna put my vehicle on four wheel drive so I can go very slowly and make sure I don't get stuck anywhere. Please don't fly, please don't fly. I beg you. Please don't. Please don't. 
Right, 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 there. And focus, focus. This horn will keep flying from us, sorry guys. Miller? Okay, there he is again. There he is, guys, again. Sorry, we are having a little bit of a trouble trying to locate him again, again, because he keeps flying away. So what's interesting about hornbills is that they completely no. feeding, feeding. Uh -huh. it's feeding on something. Are you getting it, Nipin? Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, Vimanchu, I've got an idea. Since you will have to cut, so I will have an idea. Sure. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at the hand there. I'll tell you. Up there. They're such prehistoric looking birds. <laughs> Hi. You looking at me? What is really cool uh, about behavior of hornbills is well, they are actually mates and pairs for life. So often it's only one male and one female and they spend the rest of their lives together. When it's the nesting season, they find a crack or a hole in a tree. The female goes in and she completely loses her feather and she actually uses her feces and her feather to, com to kind of cake the walls of the tree and make, it, make the nest very small. I know it sounds disgusting, but we have glue, we have cement, nature does not, so they have to make do with what they can. Just trying to see where the hornbill is, it's still there, no problem. Um, and then what the male will do, which probably the male is doing right now, it'll go out to find something to, to get the female to feed on and go out, collect fruits and insects and bring it back to the female and then feed it to the female. I have some footage uh, of, a, of a behavior like this from Corbett National Park and we're just gonna play it for you. Meanwhile, I'm gonna keep a look on this hornbill.
I hope you've enjoyed that footage. The hornbill has actually come down here. Sorry, I think I'm on the view. Oh wow, beautiful. I hope my steering wheel is not coming into the camera. No, it's not. This hornbill is pretty used to us, I guess, by now. It's very bold. Usually hornbills are shy animals or shy birds, avians. <laughs> Looking at us curiously. I've never actually seen a hornbill in Bandhavgarh at such a low perch. Uh, they often go towards the ground in southern India, both the Malabai Pied Hornbill and the Great Hornbill. But in Bandhavgarh, I would reckon due to, due to the predator density, they would not like to come such low in the ground. I'm a little confused what this, what this male is looking for because there are quite a few fruiting trees. I see Mahua, I see, uh, I see Chironji and Char and all the fruits, but this male is just chilling. He's not in the mood to eat. Maybe I'm wrong after, about him. He, maybe he's a bachelor and hasn't found a female yet. Hi dude, are you enjoying our company? <laughs> we are definitely enjoying your company. On the far side you can hear two birds. On the left is the Indian magpie robin and on the far distance like that of course that's a chicken but it's a specific jungle chicken which we call the red jungle fowl Chale? all right i think we spent quite a bit of time with our hornbill <laughs> In fact, that's probably the longest I've spent with a hornbill at such close proximity because he's right there. Bye bye, Mr. Hornbill. There he goes away. Whoa, beautiful. Did you get the fight? you got that. Wow, what a great day already. I'm so happy. I love hornbills. Woo! entered late Solos territory. Of course, her territory went between Magdi and Tala. So I've showed you the Tala side, but uh, sorry, rather I've showed you the side of Magdi, but right here we are, we are in Tala. And the drainage line back there is roughly where it began, where Chakradhar's territory ended and Solos territory began. I have so many memories, and I want to share an interesting story just up, up ahead. So you see this incline that goes right here? There's an incline which goes up top. So we were just driving like this, 20, 22 kilometers an hour, standard park, guided, uh, park driving. 
and we were coming up up on this bend. This is June 2020. We're coming up on this bend, coming up on this bend. And as soon as we reached the top here, right here, as soon as we reached the top here, we were both looking on the other side. Suddenly, a tigress was walking towards us. So we braked really hard because we couldn't see her because the road was like this. And as we braked hard, she put on her brake herself as well. And she kind of got scared. She's like, oh, what happened? <laughs> and I've never heard a tiger made, make that sound. And she literally went like, Wah! something like that. But of course, a little deeper. Uh, I wish I could mimic that exact sound. It was really funny. But we didn't have cameras rolling or anything like that. Uh, but, but then, of course, I got her. Uh, I, I got her walking towards us. I got her in film as well. And that is the last day I saw Solo. And we're going to share some of the footage from that day. She looked a little weak. She looked a little frail. She'd, had, she'd been fighting a lot with different tigers, encroaching on her territory. She even had deep wounds that she would be licking, if you notice in the footage, which we'll just put it up for you guys right now. The light is absolutely spectacular this morning. And we are just about to enter Rajbera. Who's excited? I am. Because <laughs> I'm coming here uh, nearly after two weeks. Because all this while we've been going to Magdi, Magdi, Magdi. And hardly coming to Tala. Oh my god, look at that! Oof. Wow. I have got to stop here and quickly show you guys the outline of the forest. No, not right, not right, not right, not right. Okay, just show that and then zoom zoom in there show that
so just behind that hill is um, is the area we know as Sehra. So this Rajvera area snakes its way and connects all the way to Sehra. And the, the iconic cave that you remember from my series and then you remember from the episodes we were in Magdi, that's where it is, right behind that. I'm gonna show you a good look at the grassland from the other side as well. But in the meantime, you can pan this way and see the Rajbera Meadows. This is the place where a lot of documentaries has, have been shot. And there comes Bandheni. Again, we've seen that hill quite a few times before, but you haven't never seen it from this angle. at the iconic dam in Rajvera, where every photographer's dream is to get a tiger walking in that dam. We got some deer on the other side, which is Magdi zone. Oh, serpent eagle. Uh, we missed that, he flew away. But got some deer on the other side, <laughs> looking at us very curiously. So this is a man-made stop dam, so that water collects here. Oh wow, there's, what do you know, there's an old kill right here where the crows are coming down to feed. There's barely any meat left, just bones, I would say. It has to be more than four days old. What do you think, Lala? Yes, sir, four or five days old. Did you hear about this kill? Like, was there something here? I've never heard about it. No, no, no. I'm huh. like yeah, but it looks something big. It looks like a... Maybe by the leopard. Maybe, so yeah. It's leopard because of the, some, of, some of the disturbance. They can leave the kill and move from there. Huh. For our sensitive viewers, I'm sorry. This is nature. We are showing you uh, death live and of course some bones. If you are sensitive, please look away. But remember, this is part of nature and completely natural. Okay, I'm gonna shift the angle so that you guys can get a really good look at Bandhani and Banhagar and see that there's quite a difference between them and you can also see the reflection in the water. Oh, 
Uh, Sorry, I'm just gonna change the angle because it's a little tilted. Uh, we might have to fix the tripod a little bit because I want to kind of be on an elevation so that you guys can see the reflection of Pandhani. So if you see right here, right here, okay, that is the B5 camp. It's an anti-poaching camp. It's the highest camp in Bandhagra National Park. Um, and it's also the main control center because people can see, or the forest rangers up there can see everything that's going on in the reserve. And it's quite a tricky climb because the vehicles cannot go there they have to physically climb it and I can only imagine how difficult it must be especially in the times where it's raining or there's a storm coming through So interestingly, uh, just last year, when Solo went missing, that camp was hit by lightning. And there's only one person that lives in that camp. And even though his home was completely burnt, he kept, he kept the wireless on. Thankfully, he was safe, but he kept the wireless on. He sat outside underneath an umbrella because he needed to do the work, because Solo went missing and because they needed to find the tiger, he kept doing the work. And that's the kind of officers we need, that's the kind of dedication we need to save such an important animal. Towards my right, uh, sorry about the tilted horizon, towards my right is of course Bandhagra Plateau, here's a different angle from it. And of course the, the, you see the, the size difference between Bandhani and Bandhagra. And you also see the gap in the middle between Bandhagra and Bandhani. Alright, sorry I was ducking so that you guys could see the camera. Alright Lala, yes, I want to show our guests a little sneak peek of Bataan, which is essentially just right of this side and gives another beautiful view of Banagar. Then we can proceed to Spotty's area. What do you think? Good idea? Okay, cool. Uh, in fact, there's a drongo that keeps coming down to drink water. If you focus on the right side, there's a racket tail drongo that keeps coming to drink water. Let's see if we can get a snap of that. Keep going. Yeah, there she is. On the left, on the left. It's gonna come back. Just yeah, just keep the camera there. There it is, there it is. Zoom out and keep the camera right there. Keep the camera right there. And you'll see a racket tail drongo coming down to drink water. But you'll notice that it just brushes past the water. What it's trying to do is just get a splash of it in its beak. I see it fluttering in the trees up above. Let's see if we... Oh, there it is. Wow! How cool was that? Again. Ooh. <laughs> Zoom in a little more. Just a little more. Where she's going to dip again. I know it. Left. Left down, left down, left down. Down, 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 down. Some lapwings coming through. I guess they're quite agitated that... How dare a... Racket tail drongo, there it is again. Racket tail drongo intrude on their water hole. I've actually never observed racket tail drongos doing this. Don't miss it. Follow it again, okay? It's definitely gonna come back down. 
it might have its nest over there because it's keep com it keeps coming down, splashing its beak and then taking it back up, maybe for the chicks to drink water. Because what the chicks would do is they would actually uh, drink the water from their mother's chest. Okay, I think it's done. So we're going to head out. Let's keep going. an inter interesting thing to see and I love watching mothers taking care of their young ones in the jungle because we think it's such a uniquely human characteristic but no it's a uniquely living creature characteristic I think anything with a life always cares and protects for its young ones. Be it racket-tailed drongos, insects, tigers, deer, langur, anything. Exposure. Okay, so, have you ever seen an anaconda? People say that they only exist in Brazil or the forests of the Amazon, but I will show you an anaconda right here in Bandamga National Park. There's a root of this tree going right there. Can you see it? That looks like an anaconda with its mouth open. Yeah, and they're called strangler vines, and you see that literally looks like an anaconda with its mouth open. <laughs> it's huge. And this Rajbera area and behind it, it's completely full of strangler vines. All right, off we go. Just want to show you guys that interesting thing. Here on the right, we've got some more strangler vine. right here look how they snake their way through and they're just basically gonna completely kill any of the trees that they strangle like this one's a good example right here you see it's snaking its way on this tree and then going on to that tree as well Beautiful. another beautiful area of Rajbera area. This is called Enikat. And we're just going to quickly stop here for a quick second to listen for alarm calls. Alright, no signs, no alarm calls, all I hear is birds, so we're going to keep going. Ah, look at the light now, filtering through the forest to show that.
we're proceeding towards uh, an area known as Bataan. That's also usually has been historically the part of the territory of this female who inhabited, inhabits Rajbera, Sehra area. So that's Solo, Jarjara, Rajbera over the years. And now, of course, the female who's come instead of Solo. There are actually two females who crisscross this part of Solo's territory. And both have, none of, neither of the two, I would say, is dominant yet. So if you pan the camera towards the left, you would see kind of a grassland starting up. And in the middle of it, there's a camp, again, which is an anti-poaching camp used by forest officers. And the Sal forest here looks incredible and slowly but surely gives way to a massive, massive grassland. this massive tree over here. People tree, which is considered auspicious in Hindu religion. I would reckon this tree is at least 150 years old, if not more, could be even 200. I'd like to stop here for a quick second to show you guys this angle of the Bandhagar Plateau as well. And I would also ask Himanshu to zoom in to one of those white patterns that you can see on the rock faces. And can anybody guess what those white patterns are? So Bandhavgarh has a high number of vultures and those are actually vulture nests and the whites that you see are actually vulture droppings. Alright, sorry, off we go. Usually this place is full of deer, but I could only see two grazing. Okay, I see some deer up ahead. And here on the right as well. Beautiful male stag. Sorry, we were just trying to manage the exposure because it's cloudy today. The light keeps filtering in and out. When it's out of the um, when it's out of the clouds, it's nice and bright, and then suddenly it dips into the clouds. Gives us a quite difficult time <laughs> when it comes to exposure. So right up ahead, where the forests begin again, after the grassland, is usually the intersection of the territories. And that's where Spotty's territory begins. The blue-eyed beauty of Bandhukar, Spotty. And Spotty's name is actually, it actually comes from Spot the T, because she has a T-shaped marking on her forehead. 
and I'll show you guys a picture of the D-shaped marking. We got some langur monkeys sitting. Look how beautifully they're sitting over there. And there are also some in the drainage line, uh, licking off the salt. Haha, <laughs> look at the little babies playing. I think there's a tree in the middle, so I'm just gonna position the vehicle slowly. Yep, that's better. Ah, oh, look at them. <laughs> we got some funny business going on at the back though. The adult is getting his, what I can all, already, what, or rather what I can only say, his bum cleaned. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Look at the cat. Oh my god. Langur just cracked me up. I can never get enough of them. They are too funny. And here on the right, if you see, uh, two Langur, or Langurs rather, are actually just, not that one. If you go to the drainage line, over there yes right there and they're actually licking the salt licks from the deposits in this in this riverbed all right shall we keep going yeah. good little time with langurs some interesting facts about langurs. The males weigh about 10 to 15 kilograms and the females about 7 to 14 kilograms. And usually tigers aren't able to hunt langurs because they find it difficult because they easily climb up to trees. But that doesn't mean they don't have hunt them. It's just much more difficult. Leopards though find it quite easy to dip to 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 hunt langurs. And what happens is, and I've noticed it a couple times, if a leopard climbs a tree trying to catch a langur, the langurs make sure they climb to the highest branch. But sometimes they act a little foolish, and suddenly one decides that the tree he is on, he or she is on, is not tall enough, and it must switch its tree. And when it switches the tree, Usually that's when the leopard jumps and grabs him. Okay, Lala, uh, we've entered Sporty's territory. Where do you think we should go? Go straight or to the left? Uh, left, go to check the uh, Pipri Darn? Pipri Darn. Okay, so we're gonna check this area called Pipri Darn. On January 24th, 2021, this year, uh, I was here celebrating my birthday and I had the incredible pleasure and privilege to see Spotty right here calling for her cubs. And while we try finding some pug marks or try tracking in this area, we're gonna show you guys a footage Recorded on my phone from that day.
Okay, I just want to quickly stop here because I want to show you guys these beautiful flowers of the Palace tree, which is called Flame of the Forest. Right there, you see this orangish flowers and give it just about six, seven days and the entire tree will be covered in these flowers. And this is called Flame of the Forest, quite a characteristic tree of Central India. And here on the front, you see the road is completely littered with them as well, right, right in front of me. Yeah, beautiful. And you see this tree as well, completely covered. So earlier people used to use the palace tree during the time of the holy and used the, use the flowers to create colors. What I learned from Lala the other day is that they use the stigma of the flower to actually blow a whistle which is very loud. Unfortunately Lala hasn't shown me how to <laughs> blow that whistle. So I don't know if it's true or not but I'll only believe it if Lala shows me. So we're just snaking our way through Spotty's territory. We haven't seen any bug marks or heard any alarm calls. We've seen a couple deer, but they've been out in the distance. But these ones are pretty close to me actually. I'm just gonna position the vehicle so you can get a good angle. There's a little young one as well, looking straight at us. Right there, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Two male stags coming through as well. Oh, the little one is really curious though. Oh, <laughs> hi, cutie. Beautiful antlers. And there they go, and off we go. Uh, got some rhesus macaque in the front. One on the road, right here walking towards us. These are the red-faced monkeys, or also known as rhesus macaque. This one climbing the tree actually is with a baby or a young one. Okay, another one crossing the road with the, with the baby. I'm just gonna let the vehicle inch forward. Let's see if we can get a closer look at the one on the tree. Yes, there she is. And you could see the baby curled up with its mother. It's a very young one, newborn. And maybe if we're lucky, we're gonna get a look at it. There's some fights going on between other monkeys here on the right. <laughs> you can hear the commotion. There's another one which we can see much more clearly. So I'm just going to take my vehicle towards her. Yep, there she is. And focus.
they're very protective of the young ones. And Rhesus macaque kind of get a very bad rep for being aggressive towards humans. But as you can see, we're barely 10 meters away from them and they are not causing any troubles. The only thing is, okay, we're going to head out slowly. The only thing is that a lot of the cities, people have started feeding these monkeys, both langurs and rhesus macaques. And when it comes to food, there's a lot of aggression present among the primates because it's all about survival in the wild. So when there's aggression and they just see us as a primate too, and they want the food for themselves. So once they get used to us feeding them food, and then someone comes through and doesn't give it to them, and they see a sandwich or a chip, chips packet in their hand, then they try snatching it away. And of course, us as humans, we try to like get scared, and that shows weakness. And then of course, that that uh, that is get is taken advantage of by these monkeys. But it's a bad habit. So please, I know a lot of people think that we're helping them by feeding them, but they are complete. Sorry about the bumps. They're completely wild animals, and they must forage in the wild. And you are actually training them in the wrong manner if you feed them food made for humans and it's actually really bad for them as well. Oh, we have an owlet right there. Wow. Oof. There she goes. Oh, oh. Okay, I think we might be able to get an angle. It's a jungle owlet. Uh, the only species of owlet which hunts in broad daylight. Can you see it? Aage? Sorry guys, I'm just trying to reposition. Tell me. Okay, let's see if Himanshu can get us an angle. Alright, you can barely see the owl right in the middle of that thin tree. If I'm to point it on the camera for you guys, I'll just do that. Okay, right here. If you see this tree, we're going to use another camera angle for you to zoom in and see. So here's a different angle. Now you can take a closer look at the beautiful yellowish eyes and how good the camouflage is. I don't think you can see the eyes right now, but if it turns. Shall yeah. mm -hmm. Alright, off we go. That was a good sighting. Um, wish the outlet was a little closer. But that's what, that's what happens with wildlife, right? You have no control over the lighting, the position, the angles. And it makes a good sighting all the more worthwhile. Oops, sorry. This specific path and this spray mark that I These are very fresh. Jump on the hind legs, come scratching down. Egyptian vulture. Rejoin and fix the fencing here. It's huge!
So this is Kajuri's territory. Uh, just looking around to see any signs of her. And let's keep driving and see what we can see or what we can find. Oh, oh my god, yeah, yeah, right there, tiger. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Right there is a huge male looking at us. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Imanchu. I almost missed that. Guys, tiger. Wow, wow. my hands are shaking. Right there. Thank you. Wow, I don't know who this is. This is a male tiger. Man. This is a male tiger, but I don't know who this is. I've never seen him before. But he looks enormous. Yeah, oh my gosh. My hands are shaking because I was not expecting a tiger to be walking here. And I actually missed it because I was looking towards the left. Uh, but where and why is this guy going? <laughs> wow, my hands are absolutely shaking. <laughs> I had no idea. I was looking at the road in front of me for pot marks and... <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Well done, Himanshu. Good spotting for you. Well done, Nitin. Uh, but we must relocate this guy. So the tiger is going this way and, and this road loops like that. So maybe on the high road we can hold him. So let's go. But I've never seen this tiger. The Skajri territory. Yeah, literally the density of tigers in Bandhaka is so high. There's so many different individuals crisscrossing the territories. Uh, let me just check here. Can you guys see anything? Okay, let's just keep going. Himachu? Himachu, headphones? Can you hear me through the headphones? No? You see this path, it goes straight up like that. I'm actually gonna let the car go back because if the key to instances like these is that if you don't let the car go back, your wheels will start spinning. And there you go, that's nice and easy now. Bump. Ah! <laughs> But we need this tiger and he, we've, we've seen him here and the road doesn't go that way but if he goes but if we continue like this the road will snake back down and that's where we want to try that's where we want to try and get him again Manchu. If there's any problem with audio while rolling, just let me know. Fish the Tony Ogana. Sorry about the bumps, everybody, but this is one of the prettiest locations in Baldavkar.
Look at this view. The landscape here is awesome. You can see so far away. Beautiful salt leaves. I wanted to touch one of them, but I couldn't. <laughs> Sorry about the bumps, everybody. That's why we have shifted to a different angle. And we're on second camera, which is mounted onto a rig that completely absorbs all the bumps. And it's needed at this point of time. All right, we've got some bug marks of a female. Very fresh. Look at that. So the male is coming from there. The female has gone from here. Uh, maybe they've met in the middle, but let's keep going. On your left as well, there are bug marks. They're still going, they're still going. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Just keep on the left and out the left and the right as well. Because the male is coming from there, the female is going from here. So now we're looking for two tigers, not one alone. Right is the Kora Devan area. Wow, look at this area. <laughs> Thank you. 
There's some bug marks. Got the bomb. They're going that way. This is where we have to go though, if you want to catch the mail. And the bug marks have kind of cut this way, but we're a little confused. The bug marks are the female, that is. Lala sees something. I'm just going to pass my binoculars to him. Here you go, Lala. All right. Okay. Completely came like behind those hills and all that stuff, and we were driving slowly, looking around. Some places we had to pick up the speed, but we caught him at the right time, and that's what experience does to you. You be here for so long. A lot of people ask me, "Why don't you go and explore other reserves?" Well, I have explored other reserves, but I like going deep in. Like tracking is key. And I love doing that. I love understanding behavior. There he is. There, 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 there. You see it? You see it? Right there. Do you see it, Manchu? Yeah. No? Okay, I'll show you. Go down, go down, go down. Down and to the left. I'm just going to reposition, guys. All right, I'm just going to reposition real quick because he's going to come out in the open. Okay, there he is. I can see him, I can see him. There he's sitting beautifully in the rocks. Wow. He definitely looks tired. 
definitely looks tired and that's a good thing because he might come down to the water. Uh, also a good thing for him as well because he's done a good job covering his territory and marking his territory. I still don't know who he is. He's walking in this direction. Maybe he's gonna come down to the water. Once again, we're gonna we're gonna wait at the water um, and leave the shot right now. There. Right here, if he comes through, he's gonna come through here. Okay, there he comes, there he comes. Where? Well, he's coming, he's coming. He's coming, he's coming on the this petrol here? Yeah, yeah, just focus there. There he comes, there he comes. There he comes. Zoom in, zoom in. Zoom in. There he is. Wow, what a beautiful guy. He's massive. Oh, the sun trees. He's kind of snarling at us. Showing that he is the dominant one. Okay, time to reposition. There. There he is. Again, just looking at us. Okay, I'm gonna reposition the vehicle. Wow! <laughs> He's huge! He's gonna come up here. Okay. Okay, he's gonna come out here on the rock. Lala, throw a in the Okay, he's coming. He's coming. Get ready, guys. Wow, he's just gonna enter the frame like a boss. There he is. <laughs> Massive. Amazing, dude. I love you. Wow, look at the habitat guys. I've always wanted to see a tiger here amongst the hills and the rocks. And for me to get it this way is absolutely crazy.
I think he might come down to drink water here because there is water collected. He looks thirsty. I'm not sure what path he's going to take to go down. Oh wow, <laughs> that's beautiful. Look at him, he's just looking around, making sure there's no other tiger or no other threat there. Wow, he's gonna come down right there. Oh my gosh. Angle take enough. One more. Oh, he's gonna come out on the wall. Thora exposure barao. Jaldi se. Oh, so beautiful. And he's going back down. And there he goes. I think he's found a puddle of water. I'm just going to reposition the vehicle. Nay Lala. We're just trying to see where he went. <laughs> That's nuts. The sun has come through. I'm just gonna put on my hat so that the sun doesn't distract me from trying to keep up with the tiger. Yeah, I see the sand. Right. Okay. Uh, let's focus on the sand. Maybe he's gonna come out there. Can you see the sand yeah, from the angle? You can see the tiger. You can see the tiger? Okay. Yeah, there he comes. There he comes out. Manshu, do you see the tiger? Yeah. On the screen? Yeah. Okay, I can't. Oh. Kind of got scared. <laughs> I think they've installed some camera traps over there. And. The camera traps are installed by the forest department to to basically ensure that they can get a picture of every every tiger. He's gonna come back up. That they get a picture of every camera, or a picture of every tiger rather, uh, and that's how they prepare the database and see which tiger is who. And the camera must have gone off, and <laughs> that kind of scared him. <laughs> Where do you go, guys? Mm. Oh, there he is coming out on the wall. <laughs> left, left, left. Yeah, wow. Focus. Nice. Okay, the, the only reason he's snarling at us, guys, is not because we're annoying him. We're actually really far away. But he is a dominant male, so anything in his territory needs to be uh, always 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 measured and calculated he needs to make sure that it's not a threat so he's just letting us know that hey i'm dominant beware of me wow. he's going down we might miss him Beautiful. Okay, he's going to climb back up or go down. Yep, there we go. Not too sure. 
Tara, should we go forward? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, you okay? Right there. Beautiful. Look at him, look at him. Wow, he's... Look at the landscape behind him. cameraman kind of had a fumble because I m jerked the vehicle there was a stone in front of the vehicle and I had to lift it up so my deepest and sincerest apologies to our cameraman who hopefully <laughs> did not get hurt too much <laughs> oh there he comes down and he's gonna go off to the water hole we were just discussing that <laughs> maybe Himanshu's chest and his ribs broke, but that's not the case, hopefully. I'm not worried about the camera, I'm worried about you. Camera name will be good, it will be good for you. Why not? Tell me. Tell me. Yeah, so the tiger is really, really thirsty, as you can see. Of course, we followed him from so long, and he's not able to find the water. There was a camera trap there, so he got a little scared. I'm just going to turn my vehicle and... Actually, let's keep going, Lala says. I thought I was going to turn the vehicle and put it back. But he's walked so much, and that's why he was panting, and that's why he just needs a, a tall glass of water. I wish I could give it to him, but that's probably not good for him or me. But wow, what a sight, man. I've always wanted to see a tiger here. I've never seen a tiger right here. And it's one of those iconic areas in Bandhavgar where historically the most dominant male of Tala used to live. And looking at him, he is very bold, but I've never seen him. I don't think Lala can recognize him either properly right now. We'll have to look very closely once we get back home and then only we'll be able to ascertain who he is. But he is a bold, bold tiger. Maybe we should name him Ghora Damon Male because this is his area, right? Okay, if the tiger comes out, if he hasn't found water, he's going to come out in this open area. Dude, this is the best landscape to see tigers, Nitin. Seriously. Nitin was telling me, no, Magdi is better. Magdi is better. Magdi is better. No, Tala is better. Because you haven't come here in Tala, right? You've roamed around Tala, but not here. Hornbill. Dead, 
Jess at the Baba. Thank you so much for that amazing sighting. All right, guys, congratulations, that's a wrap. Ooh. Wow, what an experience. What an experience, congratulations again, Lala. We got one new tiger in Bandhavgar. Wow, yeah. Oh, my sunglasses are about to fall. Oh. I'm actually really happy. I'm so happy. Roll it all the way, huh? Yeah. I really can't even think about the highlights. Like, what could be the highlights? The first day, the Every second day, the third day, fourth day, fifth day. <laughs> Every day, seriously. Yeah, man, I love tracking. Absolutely love tracking. And I think people need to display. Yeah, and I think people need to learn that, right? That it's 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 so much besides just uh, photography or filming. More langurs playing right in front of us. Hi guys, bye bye. We gotta leave. I'm sorry. What you eating, dude? <laughs> Look at him. Look at him eating mud. Hey. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Is the mud tasty? You want to share some with me? No? Okay. Bye bye. Sorry. I kind of have to knock the vehicle because otherwise they won't let us leave and if I don't leave, I'll get late to exit the park. The park exit is right here, but we don't want to get in trouble. So guys, what else? Yeah. Very satisfying, very, very satisfying. I want to keep doing this for the rest of my life. Yeah, I'm really doing it. Seriously.